everyone, welcome back to Fanboy TV South by Southwest Live. I'm Gavin, joined in this interview by... Mark Martinez. Which you guys just saw, I'm having some fun. And we have an amazing film in here. Let's introduce you guys to everybody. You are... Uh, I'm Amanda Schultz, producer. And Matt Convoy, director of Goodnight Brooklyn. So they've done a film called Goodnight Brooklyn, and this is a documentary, right, about mm -hmm. this epic... Like nightclub, <laughs> and this looks like the perfect movie for you guys because you guys look like musicians. Like you want to hear of like musicians did a movie about music. I mean, it's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> so why did you decide you wanted to make a documentary about this place? Uh, well, Amanda convinced me uh, that we needed to make it because uh, we she's found like, it. "We're making this film, whether you like it or not." Literally, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I kind of, with you know, we found out that the venue was gonna have to close, and it was gonna be like this kind of crazy, intense time, and. You know, it's just like an opportunity to make a cool story. They were going out with a bang, basically. Exactly. Yeah. And it, it, does it make you sad when you see these venues closing down? Because music is like something that's cross cultures, and everybody loves it. But it seems like these days it's harder and harder for live musicians to actually do anything. This used to be the live music capital of the world, but you would never know. <laughs> it's not anymore. Everybody goes to San Antonio. Everyone goes to Dallas, Houston. We don't get them anymore. And so, music is a shifting industry. Was it kind of sad to make this film? It was definitely sad. I mean, it's a personal thing, too. Like, I helped start the venue. Um, but I don't know. I'm sad. Oh, that must have been really hard then. It was tough. But I'm also I'm optimistic because for as many venues that are closing, it feels like there are a lot of new ones opening up. And there's a lot of younger kids who are excited about this stuff. You know, and that's great. Was there anything, like when you started, like, hey, like you drew on the wall and it was still there as it's closing down? You're like, man, I'm never going to see that again. Yeah, well, actually, there's a scene in the film where uh, one of our, like, staff actually cuts a piece of one of the walls out and gives it to my partner. It's like a parting gift. Here you go. Take a chunk of the club with you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but yeah. it wasn't, like, cement or anything. It was, like, drywall? It was drywall, <laughs> okay. yeah. Yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't just load bearing. What do you think it is about something like, like a venue or a house or something that it's almost... After time, it almost is like it's alive. It has, you know, a spirit to it. Uh, what do you think it is about stuff like that? I don't know. I mean, I think that our culture is like, uh, you know, into, you know, shared like sacred spaces. And sometimes that's a church and sometimes it's a you know museum and sometimes it's a music venue. And I, I think that we like to, I don't know, form communities in physical spaces. And I think we imbue them with, you know, meaning because of that. So what was it that made you say, we're making this film? Like, <laughs> this needs to be documented right now. Like, were you angry or were you happy or were you just like, hey, I want to go make a film? You know, I think it was, I had never really met that community before. And when he brought me through those doors and those people were just like, oh, yeah, that's cool. Awesome. Hang out. Like, they were just so kind and so amazing. And I've never experienced a group of people like that. And then to find out that it was happening the way that it was happening with how they were closing and why it was closing, that it only made sense to just figure out how to capture it and whatever happened out of that capturing was something that could be an awesome home video or could be an amazing movie. And we just got really lucky. So you're our second producer who's come in who's been outside of the culture coming <laughs> into it. Was it a shock for you? Like, we, we're not prepared for this? Uh, no, I, I have a, a, I think my background sort of blended itself into like making this a really like fun experience for them. So it was less like, oh my gosh, how do we just like figure this out? And it's like, no, here's, here's everything that you can do to like, you know, make this happen and enjoy it while you're, while it's all happening, while it's being destroyed and then being able to capture it at the same time. So. Yeah. That's just amazing. <laughs> and when you talk about there's other venues that pop up, we live in Austin with 6th Street and those venues change every month. Really? So I don't, I mean, we have a few around town that are pretty hardcore, but we're used to the disposable. It changes owners, changes names on the drop of a dime. So we don't, I, I haven't had that experience in a place that has just been the place to go. So it's nice to see that these are out there and people are actually taking care of it. But we, I'm thinking that's just the way of the future. I mean, people make it's quick thousand bucks on a bar, let's sell it. <laughs> <laughs> I hope not. I don't know. Hopefully, hopefully, it, hopefully, the you know. Have you? Uh, um, is this y'all's first time in in Austin? Uh, no, I, we've both been here before. I've oh. been to South Bay uh, a couple times, but only for oh. music. Okay, all right. So, <laughs> so you've got to just sample all of our our weirdness here. Yeah, it's great. Okay. Yes. <laughs> so for all the places to have a good stable place, it would be Austin. Yeah. You think? Yeah. You know, Sixth Street is such an icon, but it changes every year, and people change ownerships. I think the only place down there that I really like is the Parish has been there for a long time. They've got a great venue upstairs and downstairs. 
But all the other ones, they just change hands, and the signs change, like the seasons change. And so, you know, that's why I think there's a, that aspect missing, especially from someplace that still refers to itself as the live music capital of the world, <laughs> without any amazing venues to go to. You know, we're so limited, but we shouldn't be. And I think every city, that's the way it should be. But this is just another sign of the encroaching times, closing things down, things because, you know, so well, why don't you start one? If I had the business know how, I certainly <laughs> would. I could make this show happen, but I could never, like, do. I, I mean, as much as I want to be able to do, like, a network, I wouldn't know the business side of it. Oh, you could do it. It's not I would, that, hard. that place would go down in flames <laughs> within a month, but we, we'd go out with a bang, and that would be film worthy because we blow stuff up and fireworks everywhere. And. You know, there there is the, the community space, and, you know, they're just kind of going away as technology, and people don't connect anymore, they're all behind phones, and zones get changed, and people, it's just, it's sad. It's kind of depressing that we're, that we're missing this aspect. So when you start a place, help start a place, and you see it going away, I can't even imagine what that must have been like. I mean, it was a little intense, but, like I mean, like I said, like, there's, you know, there are people starting other venues all the time. At least in New York, it's you know it, everything's kind of being destroyed and built anew all at the same time. You know, and typical New York way. But I th I think that you know I hope that's happening everywhere. I hope for as much as there's all a lot of change in like these you know big cities that some of that change is closing down things that are great, but also maybe some new things are starting up in their wake that are good. I mean, I, I'm optimistic in a way. Well, we could hope. So where can we find <laughs> out more about you and this film online? Uh, online, we have a website, goodnightbrooklyn.com. Right, if you just even Google that or Death by Audio documentary, you'll find it. And then we're it's premiering on Monday at the Stateside at 4 p.m. It's a great theater. Yeah, yeah and it's, it's playing there twice. Uh, and then... And it's playing on Tuesday. Tuesday at 2 p.m. on the at Rollins. Yes. And yeah. Then Rollins, on yeah. Friday. You're playing some pretty good venues. <laughs> you got good <laughs> venues. Yeah, I haven't been to them. I don't look forward to you. You haven't been there. Yeah. <laughs> so thank you guys for coming and being on the show. Yeah. Welcome you. back to Austin. Go downtown and be like, yeah, you know what? These are all pretty commercial bars. <laughs> <laughs> I would ruin Sixth Street forever for someone. And have a great time at South by this year. Thanks, Thanks so much. Thank you so much. So stay tuned. We'll be back with more Fanboy TV South by Southwest Live right after this. No, I would be yeah. the sniper in the back, making sure you all died and I could get the loot myself. That, that's well, that's what I'm saying, like, you and I would just be in the back going, let them kill themselves. Okay, now finish off the rest, so let's go clean up. <laughs>